Hi everyone, my name is Asis and I am working as a mutual developer in TGS Software Solutions. So today we'll be learning about implementing API proxy in MuleSoft and applying client ID enforcement policy. So first of all, what is API proxy? API proxy acts as an intermediary layer between clients and API. Client is nothing but uh, the application which wants to access uh, the Mule app application. And uh, coming to the API, API stands for Application Programming Interface, which is a software boundary that binds the discrete applications and data sources in a loosely coupled manner and abstracts the underlying complexity. So API proxy is hosted on an API gateway and uh, in MuleSoft it requires a separate comp computational memory to run that uh, proxy application. So uh, when we can go for a, a API proxy? Whenever any specification or API is built outside MuleSoft and we want to expose it from MuleSoft, then we can uh, make use of API proxy. And whenever we want to mask the actual API also, we can use uh, API proxy. So these are some key advantages of API proxy. Uh, first is uh, it adds an extra layer of security by authenticating, uh, authorizing requests and protecting your backend services from unauthorized access and attacks. And uh, proxy can manage and control traffic to your APIs, including uh, rate limiting, throttling, and uh, casing uh, to ensure uh, optimal performance and protect against uh, traffic spikes. And uh, proxy also provides a detailed analytics and monitoring of API traffic. So now let's see uh, the demo, how to configure the uh, API proxy in MuleSoft. Let me quickly jump to the AnyPoint platform. Yeah. So as I told, uh, whenever we have a API uh, specification built outside MuleSoft, uh, we can uh, go for the API proxy. But for this demo, um, I am creating one uh, specification in the uh, like AnyPoint platforms design center so that I can uh, show this particular demo as I don't have any uh, other specification for now. So let's see uh, the specification once. So this uh, specification is developed using uh, RAML 1.0 and the API is just a greeting API. Whenever you will call this API, it will uh, return one greeting message. So you can see the, um, the resource path is test and we have only one uh, HTTP method which is get and the message is greetings. And now we need to uh, publish it to the uh, exit. So uh, in order to add an API proxy or in order to create an API proxy, we need to add an API in the um, AnyPoint API manager. For that, the API should be present in the uh, exchange or we can add it from there itself as I am uh, developing that uh, this particular specification in the design center itself. So I need to exchange it to the uh, uh, like I need to publish it to the exchange uh, so that I can add it in the API manager. So let's publish it and uh, I'll be pu publishing it as a stable version. Yeah. So I'll be publishing, publishing it to the exchange. Uh, it is taking some time. Let's wait till it get published to the exchange. Yeah, now it is published to the exchange. Let's go to the exchange. You can see uh, this is the exchange. Uh, this is my AnyPoint platform exchange. Let's replace it and let's see uh, if we have, yeah, we have the API uh, published in the exchange. This uh, asset is published into the exchange and you can see this is the endpoint. And uh, this is the HTTP code and this is the message. Okay, so uh, now we need to um, add the API proxy. Uh, we have to add this particular specification uh, to the API proxy or we can say we will build uh, one API proxy on top of it. For that, we need to go to the um, AnyPoint platforms API, uh, API manager. So this is the API manager. So to create a proxy, first of all, we have to uh, come to the API manager, then we can click here, add new API or import API from zip file. So you can add a new API here, or you can import a uh, API, which is like the specification you have in your system. 
um, you can import it or uh, we will go uh, for our new API. Here uh, we are choosing the Mule Gateway. And once you choose the Mule Gateway, you can see here deploy a proxy application. And uh, the target type uh, we are choosing here Cloud Up. And yeah, the runtime channel is Edge and the version is 4.6. If proxy application name, let's uh, name it as uh, Demo. Now let's hit on the next. Okay. Yeah, let's hit on the next. The cloud name is already taken. Yeah, we can see now uh, we will be able to see the APIs which are published to the exchange. You can see the demo one here. We'll choose the demo one and uh, rest of the things we can uh, leave it as by default and uh, we will hit on the next. And this is the base path. Here in the base path, we can give any kind of base path. Let's say I am giving it as a proxy, proxy path. So whenever our uh, proxy URL will be created, we need to add this uh, proxy path. Like uh, whatever the URL will be there, we will be adding, we will be concatenating, uh, concatenating this base path to that particular um, uh, proxy URL. And uh, here, the moment you will hit the next, here you need to give the upstream URL. Upstream URL means the API which we want to uh, consume or uh, the API on which you are building, like on top of which you are building this API proxy. Now let's say your API uh, looks like this. Um, for an example, let's say this is your API. So you will be adding this and uh, then you will be clicking on next. Uh, so this, uh, Senses here, yeah. So once you hit on the next, then the moment you will uh, do save and deploy, it will be deployed. It, like it will deploy one application uh, to the cloud of, and you can see it in the runtime manager to avoid the um, hassle of a deployment. As uh, we all know, like it takes a lot of time. So I have already deployed some proxy application. I'll show you the configuration once. Let's see here. This is the greetings API. Uh, if you can see here, uh, like the same specification, this is the greetings API and uh, this is a proxy. This is the proxy API for the greetings API and uh, the implementation is done uh, in like the implementation is built in the AnyPoint Studio and it is deployed to the cloud of you can see greeting test is the application name and uh, I'll show you once hitting uh, the URL. Uh, what is the uh, the response we are getting so the path is here test yeah so you can see the message is hi welcome to the integration work. that is uh, like already uh, deployed to the uh, cloud up and you can see it in the runtime manager now uh, this is uh, the proxy this is the proxy configuration you can see the proxy app name is greeting uh, api test and the base path is proxy path and this is the upstream url you can see i have given here till uh, slash apis but the slash test uh, the relative url i'm not giving as it will be concatenated in the proxy url also we have to concatenate it uh, in the proxy url and uh, this is the uh, configuration for the proxy now, once the proxy URL is ready, uh, like uh, as I told, when you will hit the save and deploy, one application will be deployed here. You can see the, this is the greeting API test 
which is the proxy um, application's name and you can see it is deployed to the cloud and this is the uh, path for that particular API. And now let's go here. We can see the same path here as well. We'll try to hit it. But yeah, first of all, I need to uh, remove the policies as I'll show how to add this client uh, ID enforcement policy on top of it. Uh, so it will take some time uh, to reflect the uh, latest changes, but still we will try to hit it once and uh, let's see if it is giving us the result or not. As you can see, it is giving us authentication denied. So it will take uh, one to two minutes to reflect the latest changes and uh, So uh, by that time, I will show. Let's wait for a moment. And uh, yeah, we can see uh, using the proxy URL, we are getting the uh, message as uh, the response, which, is, which we are getting from the actual API. We are, get, we are able to get the response. But if you'll see, this is a completely different URL. And uh, the URL which we hit um, in the first go, that is a completely different URL. So yeah, the URL is changed here. And uh, as I told, this is also an advantage of proxy. We can see it uh, in the demo. Now let's uh, implement the client ID enforcement on the proxy. So uh, for that, uh, the client ID enforcement is basically like we have to uh, send the client ID and client secret in order to access the uh, API. And if we are not sending it, it will give us a authentication error. Uh, let's uh, see in the postman uh, first if everything is uh, working fine till now. So this is the upstream URL as I told. Um, this is the URL or this is the API which we uh, like originally developed. So if we'll hit this, you will get the message as uh, hi, welcome to the integration world. And if you'll see the proxy endpoint which we uh, just pro uh, like created uh, the proxy path. If you'll send, you will get the same response. But if you'll see, the URLs are different. Now we will uh, enforce the client ID and, uh, like policy so that whenever the client ID and client secret is sent in using the headers, then only the API, like we can access this particular proxy application. Uh, else it will uh, throw back an error as a, the user is not authenticated. So for that, we will go to the uh, API level policies. Here we will use add policies and we will go to the below. We will use client ID enforcement here. And then hit on next. Yeah. So we are using custom expression where we need to send it as client ID and client secret. And then just click on apply. And you can see the client ID enforcement is uh, like uh, the policy is applied to that particular application, a uh, proxy application. So now if we hit it, it will ask us for the client ID, the client ID and client secret. Let's uh, check that if it is asking for the client ID and client secret or not. As you can see, this is the proxy endpoint. We are uh, hitting it. It generally takes uh, some time to reflect the latest changes. Uh, let's wait for a moment and uh, then uh, retest it. Yeah, as you can see, the authentication is denied. We are not able to send the request like we are sending the request, but we are not able to uh, access the resource as we are not sending the client data and client secret. Now. Uh, we will see how we can get that client ID and client secret. So uh, for that, let's go to the uh, endpoint platform exchange. And here you can see the greetings API is present. So we will open that greetings API um, and we will go to request access. There we will select our API instance. If this is the API instance, which is the proxy instance. If I will show, it is 193.4088. If we'll go here, you can see the same instance ID, 4088 is ending. So once you select this, then select an application. So if it is a proxy application, you need to create a new application always. As um, I'm testing it uh, before this uh, demo. 
So greeting um, API test, uh, the application which is deployed to the runtime manager, it is already present there. So we will choose it. We'll hit on request access. And you can see the contract is already exists. So let me remove the contract once here. Uh, I'll go here. I'll remove the contract. I'll delete it. Now let's request access once more. Now request access. You can see this is the client ID. This is the client secret. We can copy the client ID. If you will come here, I have already selected, like I have already sent it client ID and client secret. We'll delete it and we will send it uh, first. Let's okay. the client ID first. Then we will get the client secret. So go and copy the client secret. Now let's hit the request and see if we're able to access the resource node. As you can see, we are able to access the resource one, once we are sending the client data and client secret. One more thing I want to uh, say add here. So uh, whenever we are creating this particular uh, API, uh, like we are enforcing this client ID uh, policy, you can go to the policy section itself and you can check here is uh, one thing present, which is API specification snippet. If you click on it, you will get uh, some code. It is nothing but a trait, and you can see it also how the trait is uh, like. Um, this is the code. This is the code you can add in your RAML, and uh, then according to this, uh, whenever your authentication is denied, on uh, like uh, according to this, it will give you the response back. If you'll see in the uh, design center. I will show you how it is uh, like how you need to add it. Yeah, so this is the way this is the trait where it is defined. Uh, the, this is the same snippet which I copied from the policies like uh, once the client ID enforcement is done, the policy is implemented and then uh, we can get it from the uh, like snippet and we will copy it here and uh, we will refer it here. Now this is a trait. Trait is nothing but the behavior, how the API will behave. Now we are seeing this client ID is required. The, if someone is not sending this client ID, then it is unauthorized. You can see uh, 401 unauthorized or invalid client application credentials. So now it is implemented on your uh, specification also. Like whenever you will provide this specification to someone, the person will know, okay, I need to send the client ID and client secret, uh, else I will be not authorized to access the resource. So that's uh, all about, that's all about uh, the API proxy and uh, enforcing the client ID policy. Thank you for watching.